Okay, so our agenda for our webinar today will be some common business requirements around security and compliance, um, the security features and then the compliance features of Office 365, and then have a look at what features are actually included with what plans. We'll then do a quick uh, look at some of the configuration of the options that we've outlined here, and again, finish off with our best practices and our takeaways to give you something to implement inside your business. So to kick off, let's look at some common business requirements that are out there for many organisations. So the first question that most people generally get, uh, resellers would get about Office 365 or information in general or the cloud is, is my information safe? So how do you answer that? How do you justify or how do you prove or how do you make the users comfortable in the fact that uh, in many cases storing it in a data center with Microsoft, um, you know, looking after it 24 by 7 is a lot more secure than perhaps their server under the desk connected by a consumer grade router. But be prepared, that is a question that you will need to answer specifically and provide information around that because that is a major concern. The next major concern that I see out there is typically around the retention of information. So you get a lot of questions, especially in small business, as to what happens when an employee leaves. So an employee might have a, a large amount of mail, may have some documents, may have things on their local drive. Um, what happens then? How is that archive? Is it just deleted? Uh, who needs access to it? How long do you retain it for? Uh, what's the process? So again, think about how that's currently done or not done on premise now and think about the options that can be provided with a cloud system like something uh, something of the nature of Office 365. It certainly makes that retention much easier and can potentially automate a lot of that. Another question you get is, well, that you can go in and talk to people about is how do they actually manage their information? Do they have a life cycle? Do people just keep maintaining endless, endless reams of data? Do they actually archive it? Do they move it to another location and secure it? Do they take it off site? Um, what policies do they have for managing their information? What sort of requirements do they have from a legal point of view? We all uh, are generally subject to the requirements of the Australian Tax Office, which generally means records and financial records need to be kept for a period of at least seven years. With more and more records being electronic, uh, you're going to need to have a policy and procedures on to how that's maintained. Also, we face a, a world where litigation is far more common. Uh, this means that you may customers may be served with a discovery order, which means they would have to come in and provide information pertaining to a matter. Now, a lot of that information, as I mentioned, will be electronic. So how would you make that information available? How would a customer make that information available um, under a court order? Um, generally, it's very hard to do in an on-premise environment. So you would have to potentially provide all emails, all documents, or correspondence um, that talk about that matter. So how do you achieve that in an on-premise environment? That becomes quite difficult in a cloud environment where all the information is generally centralized. It can be easier, especially with Office 365, we get a lot of tools to achieve that. Now, what's actually happening to the information? How do I know it's being used in the right manner? Is it being sent outside my organization? How many emails are going out every day? How many attachments? What files are being used? What users are logging into what systems? Um, part of good governance means that you have some sort of auditing in process so that you know what's going on with the information inside your business. Again, this is a conversation you can take to your customer and say, well, how are you managing this? How are you monitoring your data now? Um, is it something that you need to do? It's something that we can offer. It's something that a product like Office 365 can offer. And again, it doesn't necessarily be an all or nothing. So if we go back to the retention option, maybe it's an option to get Office 365 and use the storage capacity to move archive files. Perhaps it's an option to move archive email boxes, but keep the other stuff on premise. So it's not an all or nothing um, uh, argument. You can certainly use the best of both components, again, to service the customer's needs. But remember, these are very common questions that in many cases, customers are not yet addressing, and they may typically have a need to do that. The other big question is who controls my information? Do users actually know which users have control of that information? Who can access the payroll information? Who can access the uh, restrictive policies? Who can make changes to the templates? Who can send out emails as support or get into bank accounts? 
Uh, again, a lot of small businesses don't have these controls. A lot of these businesses do need this, and this is a service that you can certainly go in and offer and couple in something like Office 365 and maybe even some of the on-premise uh, offerings to provide more control for users around their information. Generally, we are seeing a proliferation of information, but we're not seeing the control that comes along with that. So what that means is, is all this information is leaking outside an organisation that could be particularly damaging um, and also may impact competitiveness. So be aware of that. The final one is, is obviously we want to have a look at control. We want to do auditing and policies and all this sort of stuff. But Basically, we need a nice, simple report if we can, so we can see quickly what's going on each and every day or once a day, once a week, whatever. So having a basic summary that is in a form that is uh, easily digestible, um, I can look at, understand, drill into if I want to, uh, is very important because most business owners don't have the time or the resources to spend digging into some of these business requirements. So again, that's something that you as a, an IT reseller can provide, can offer. With Office 365, you get uh, access potentially to the customer's console. You can run a lot of the reports. You can print them out. You can, again, set notifications and alerts so that you get alerted and then you can determine how important they are and go back to the business owner and speak to them about what they should be addressing. And again, what you can look at doing is rolling uh, a service around that. So just because the information moves from on-premise into the cloud doesn't necessarily mean that your role uh, as an advisor, as someone who monitors this sort of requirement goes away. In many cases, there's actually an enhanced ability to go in and sell these features for a lot of businesses that aren't currently doing that, but really should be. Okay, so let's have a look at Office 365 security to get started. So first thing to remember with all Office 365 services is that the data in transit from the workstation up to the Microsoft servers is encrypted end to end. So that means from the browser on the workstation all the way through to the server for exchange, for email, um, for SharePoint is encrypted using SSL and TLS basically uh, constantly across all plans and for all users. The other thing to remember is that by default, all data at rest is encrypted. So what that means is, is that when the data is actually stored in the Microsoft data centers on Microsoft servers, it is encrypted at rest, which means when it's not being accessed, it lies on encrypted hard disks, which are encrypted with BitLocker, and in which I'll demonstrate or highlight a bit further on is that if you're using file level storage, the file levels are actually encrypted per file um, unique to each file. So again, we're getting data in transit. So the information in and out of Office 365 is secured and the data when it is at rest is also secured with unique encryption. Apart from what we have at default, we also have additional encryption technologies that depending on the plan, Office 365 plan you have, depending on what features that you enable, you can also include things like information rights management. Information rights management gives you the ability to provide security around information outside the organization. So what that means is, is that uh, when you send information to other people, you can use information rights management to control what they can do with that information. So maybe they can read it, but they can't print it, and they can't copy it, and they can't forward it on. So again, Implementing that on premise can be a very challenging task requiring additional resources. The big advantage of something in the cloud is generally you have those resources, it's built in, um, you're getting the enterprise level features, just a matter of enabling it and going forward with it. So again, if you have a look at information rights management, more and more people are wanting, again, like I said, to control the information inside and outside their organization. And a good way to do that is to implement something like information rights management. We've also got the ability to uh, encrypt our emails using SMIME if we want to and enable that. We've also got the ability to fully encrypt uh, our messages. So what that means is that you can send somebody an encrypted email, which means that they will receive basically a stub. They click on that stub in their unprotected email. They'll be taken to a protected and secured 
uh, site in Office 365 where they can then access and read that message and potentially reply to it. So the advantage with that is the message um, that you want is actually encrypted and lives on Office 365 servers in Microsoft, doesn't transit the normal internet and to, for users, other people to access it, they need to log into that system securely and read and reply to that message. So if you do want true end-to-end -end message encryption, that certainly is possible with Office 365. And again, you also have the ability to do TLS or transport layer security to add additional uh, uh, protection via your mail. So maybe you have a situation where you want a web server to send e-commerce uh, information into Office 365. You can look at setting up TLS connections to be able to achieve that. So again, you get end-to-end -end protection uh, at a very low protocol level. Now, of course, built into Office 365 is, for every plan, is the anti-spam and anti-virus capability. So again, they support multi-engine uh, anti-malware. They support anti, um, again, anti-spam protection for mails inbound and outbound. And they have what's called advanced fingerprinting technology, which is typically hosted under what's called DLP, data loss prevention, that allows you, for example, to upload a document uh, and then that document uh, any documents that look like the one that you've uploaded can be flagged and can allow users to be warned about not sending me that sort of information outside the business. So we'll cover that in a little bit more detail further on. Again, we can look at marking messages, uh, bulk messages as spam, and we can block unwanted emails based on a language or a geographic region. So you do have a, a certain, uh, a fair amount of control over um, how you set these anti-spam and anti-virus filters as an administrator. And we'll go to that in the demo to show you that, again, there is quite a lot of configuration that you can do. The recommendation generally is when you're setting up these sort of systems or you want to uh, maybe tweak them to suit your own needs, is do it basically using something like PowerShell. So create a script that does all the configurations for these security options the way that um, you want, and then when you go to the next customer, you can then take that script, rerun it against their tenant, and know you get the same results. Also appreciate that customer data is isolated uh, on the uh, using logical isolation, even though it's running on the same hardware. Typically, it's isolated using the benefits of the Azure Active Directory organizational unit. So even though you're sharing a common SharePoint, you're sharing a common exchange, perhaps, um, basically, no users will see users outside their tenant because all the control and security is managed by the Azure Active Directory, which sits below Office 365 and provides identity management for that. So again, customers can be uh, assured that their information won't leak to anybody else who is also using the service. So I talked about the encryption at rest with Perfile encryption. So let me just dig into this a little bit deeper to give you a, an idea of the extent to micro, that Microsoft does invest in protecting information. So if we take a normal file that you would upload to something like OneDrive or SharePoint, what happens is, is that file is then shredded, basically broken into a number of components. So again, in this case, the file is broken up into four unique component. So again, that is then taken and run through crypt, um, some crypto. And what happens then is that each component of that file, those four items there, is then encrypted uniquely with a different key. So what you end up with is a file made up of components that are all encrypted, but each component is then encrypted with its own unique key. So what that means is one file is then stored into a content database, uh, basically in a uh, encrypted format, but in such a way that you would need potentially multiple keys to unencrypt that file. Now, those keys are obviously then stored in another location uh, called the key store and re retrieved as required to uh, basically reconstitute the file when it's required. So 
You don't see any of this happening in the background. None of your end users see any of this happening in the background. But the reality is, is that Microsoft does take the file encryption at rest very seriously. And as you can see, this is very sophisticated technology that is happening in the background automatically, where that each file is broken up into a number of much smaller components. Each component is then encrypted with its own unique key and then stored. So that encryption decryption happens on the fly constantly um, in the background without your knowledge. So again, this is the level of security that Microsoft is investing um, to make sure that a product like Office 365 is secure. Of course, um, security is great, but you need to constantly be testing it. So Microsoft has a dedicated uh, has dedicated teams that obviously go through the systems and simulate doing breaches so they look at doing you know war game exercises where maybe it's denial of service attack or where it's a concerted attack on a server or a mail server or a user or whatever they also then use uh, red teaming which is basically a, a team of bad guys versus a team of good guys to see if the bad guys can get in and learn from uh, any ways of uh, that the red team can take advantage of that. They also simulate an insider attack. So what happens if there is someone who is within a trusted level within the Microsoft environment that does decide to do the wrong thing or is compromised for some reason? How, do the system, how does the system deal with that? And we've got some detail on that coming shortly. Again, you've got other things like um, they do reports on the post breach. Any of that sort of thing is reported and made transparent. And obviously, Microsoft spends a lot of time working with third party providers to monitor the emerging threats, to monitor the security landscape, to ensure their systems are protected. Because as you can appreciate, they're a pretty big target along with a lot of very large cloud providers. So it's in their best interest to make sure their security is very strong, monitored and uh, basically give that trust to the end user. Don't forget that Microsoft also gives you the ability in Office 365 to do multi-factor authentication. So you can use your phone, either mobile apps, phone calls, or text messages, so that when a user logs into the system, they use a password, but then they are prompted to enter um, a two-factor code sent to them via an SMS maybe, or they can have a two-factor app on their phone they then need to enter into the system. So again, making passwords, making logins more secure um, can be done quickly and easily in Office 365 by default, built into the package using multi-factor authentication. Okay. Also, don't forget what we've got is the world is now moving to an era where we're all about devices rather than about necessarily desktops, okay? Mobile device management is a component that is built in by default with Office 365, okay? So you, we've done a session previously, we've done a webinar on this previously, so I suggest you go back and review that in more depth if you want to get information. But what it gives you at a very base level is the ability to control policies around conditional access. It allows you to manage the devices to see what operating system, what patch level they have, and potentially it also allows you to um, do selective wipe on those devices. So selective wipe is good because most people are bringing their own device uh, into an organization, connecting it up to corporate data. If they do leave or it does get um, and it does get compromised, perhaps you only want to delete the corporate data. You can do that with a selective wipe built into Office 365 without the need to necessarily wipe everything end to end on the device and take it back to factory defaults. If you want further protection, if you want the ability to push out applications to manage um, those sort of things at a much higher level, then you can combine Office 365 with the Microsoft in the, uh, Microsoft Intune product. Again, the big advantage here is it's just a direct plug-in to your Office 365. There's no major reconfigurations. It's all basically cloud-based. Again, it will pick up your devices and integrate very nicely together in a single environment. So one of the big or the growing demands of many businesses out there is the ability to do mobile device management on their fleet. Again, Microsoft Office 365 gives you that ability to implement that out of the box by default. And then if you want to extend it beyond that, take advantage of the advanced features. Again, you can look at something like Microsoft Intune, but remember that uh, if you want more information on mobile device management, we have done a previous webinar on that. So please review that. 
As I mentioned, we also have the ability to do rights management. So what that means is, is that the information on a PC, um, whether it's at rest, can be protected and encrypted so that only the user who, uh, need, who has rights to access information can. So if a uh, user rights managed protected file on a laptop, uh, that laptop is then compromised perhaps, or some other user logs in, uh, that other user won't be able to access the file or view the file if they don't have rights to do that. Now that also applies again to things like devices as well. So now we can get a true end-to-end -end protection of our information based on who is accessing that information once they have been identified to the device. So importantly, this is an option that can be added in, configured in. This is a service that you could build and roll out to clients, give them the option if they want this level of protection of their documents and of their information, then you can certainly implement information rights management quickly and easily in Office 365. Now I talked about DLP, data loss prevention. Um, one of the things that data loss prevention can do basically is it can scan materials such as emails looking for credit card numbers, driver's licenses, tax file numbers. But what you can also do is you can upload a template document and then use this document fingerprinting feature. So what happens then is once you upload a template, so let's say you have a medical report, uh, a typical medical report template of a patient, um, then what happens is, is if Office 365 um, using DLP detects that there is an attachment going out of the system or there is a SharePoint file being sent out of the organization, that matches um, that template that you have uploaded for fingerprinting, then it will take action on that. So some of the actions can be don't send the document, some of it can be flag an administrator, some of it can be flag the user to prompt them that this shouldn't be happening. So importantly, again, using data loss prevention, you can now create policies that look at the information that is moving out of your organ uh, out of the organization and then make intelligent decisions on it basically before it starts moving out the organization. So again, it prevents things like people sending credit card numbers in emails by prompting uh, the user potentially to let them know that that is not an acceptable policy within the business. So remember, that we also have within Office 365 in our emailing, we have the ability to implement an in-place archive. So every Office 365 plan that includes email has the ability to have an archive. The basic plans uh, allow a total of 50 gig shared between the inbox and the in-place archive. The in-place archive typically will live always in the cloud, is not synced down to the local machine. But the basic plans allow 50 gig um, total storage split between the inbox and the archive. The more advanced uh, exchange plans allow a, effectively an unlimited archive, and that gives you an unlimited inbox. So locally, the maximum you can synchronize down in your inbox and in your OST file is 50 gig. But if you have an advanced plan, then you can have as much information as you want stored in the archive in the cloud with Office 365. Remember that you can also uh, set policies. We can apply um, a, an overall company policy that may automatically archive emails that are six months old. Maybe they delete them, maybe they move them to some other location. And you can create a number of these policies and apply them quickly and easily through your organization using um, the administration control. The advanced plans also give you the ability to place information on hold. So why is placing information on hold important? So in the case where you have an, e an employee who perhaps is disgruntled, leaves the organization, and then may decide to delete their entire mailbox before leaving, the in-place hold allows you to basically capture any changes made once that hold has been enabled on the mailbox or the item. So if you find something untoward, you can place that information on hold. It is then retained um, going forward indefinitely. So that means that you'll always be able to recover, view that information no matter what the employee does um, at their end. So again, they could take a whole lot of emails, they could delete them, and if you placed that information on legal hold, you would always have that available to you. Importantly, uh, we can certainly work with a lot of information, but it's important to be able to find that information. So Office 365 gives you the ability to do multi-mailbox searches 
and things like eDiscovery. Again, eDiscovery is typically part of the advanced plans. So what eDiscovery can do, for example, is you can say, I want to search a certain number of Marbox and a certain number of SharePoint sites. I'm looking for a certain combination of words, um, Bitcoin, Bahamas, and Qantas perhaps, and any information that I find that matches that criteria, please place on hold and flag and print out in this report. So eDiscovery is becoming more and more a requirement of our day-to-day -day legal environment because information is digital. So typically what happens is, is a customer gets served with a discovery notice from a law firm. They're, maybe they're under investigation or sued or something. They will be required to produce all the information about um, you know, Mr. Jones and this uh, situation. You would need to be able to provide that information. You can do that using something like eDiscovery. eDiscovery has typically been a very expensive tool only performed by very large accounting firms generally. Okay, now if for some reason that Microsoft does need to uh, access the information to work on it, again, remember that the engineers have gone through a vigorous security background check, fingerprinting, training, and they also, the system only grants them the least privileges to require the task, and it is also grants them that for a limited amount of time. Okay, so they don't get full access to your data forever, they're given the amount of time required generally to complete that task and that is monitored again by management. Now, one of the features that Office 365 is now incorporating will be making available to advanced plans is the concept of a customer lockbox. So this means that you can place a lock on your information so that if at any stage Microsoft does require access to your information, you would need to go in as an administrator and unlock the box and allow the administrator to go in and make those changes. So you then have the final uh, approval process of when Microsoft access your accesses your information and for how long they can access. So the request would go in, you would then be contacted via a notification and an email, you would need to go in as an administrator, unlock the, the information and do it for a period of time and then the Microsoft engineer will be able to get to it. All that is then audited, tracked and uh, traceable if required. So let's have a quick look at the compliance side of things. So when it comes to compliance, uh, again, the easiest thing to go if you have a user who needs information about compliance is to go to that um, website down there. Uh, that will give you all the security uh, compliance items. So you'll see that it has things like ISO compliance, it has HIPAA, the US health-based ones. Um, it has a whole lot there that um, probably means something to um, some users, but again, in depth, go and have a look at that link that I have listed there for you. So the idea also is that Microsoft information is private, is private to the customer. Microsoft does not use Office 365 data um, to profile the user, to use it to uh, show them advertising. Okay, so the uh, scanning of the email document is basically not used to data mine. Obviously, it needs to be uh, scanned or checked for antivirus, but it's not it's not used uh, or scanned beyond that. Uh, you'll also see that the access is uh, generally tied to a geographic region. So again, we are lucky to have two Australian data centres uh, here, one in Sydney and in Melbourne. That information can be replicated between them. And as I've noted before, it's now commencing the process of moving Australian tenants that used to be homed in Singapore back to Australia. The users won't have to do anything or see anything but um, the process to migrate Australian data from its original location in Singapore back to Australian data, uh, Australian data centres has now commenced. If there's any notification, sorry, if there's any changes in these policies, the user will receive notifications. So again, there's plenty of uh, privacy controls, user level controls to determine uh, for users how they can share information, okay? So one of the big questions that's always raised we see about is the fact that uh, apart from advertising, the information is actually safe from the government. 
Um, Microsoft does deserve kudos for its uh, stance on a lot of this. They uh, commit to not providing governments with unfettered access. They require it to be uh, requested by law, which usually means a, uh, a court request to do that. Uh, and again, the idea here is, is that the user is in control of the data. If the government requires that the user or mandates the user not be notified, about accessing the data, then Microsoft has to comply with that. But generally, Microsoft will do everything in its power to ensure that the user is made aware of any um, surveillance of their information. So again, we talked about e-discovery and in-place hold in Office 365. We've got the integrated tools. So the advanced plans allow you to put uh, email boxes on hold. It allows you to put SharePoint sites and information on hold. So that preserves any changes that are made as well as the original. It also means that when you delete information, you can set up policies so that they happen at a certain time. Um, the policies can be folder level, user level, um, and you can determine these at a site level. And of course, as I mentioned, the important thing is the ability to be able to find your data when you need. So all plans include the ability to search across the information, but the advanced plans allow you to not only search, but to put that information on hold so that at any stage you will have the original of that information if required. Okay, so here's a quick uh, layout of the options available uh, with the plans, the security, the compliance. You'll see that in the majority of cases that uh, all the features, all the advanced features are included in the E3 Enterprise plan. You get a number of additional features with the E1 plan and a minimal set of features when it comes to the business plan. So again, part of the messaging or part of the process when speaking to customers is to go in and make sure that you sell them the features, help them understand the benefits of the advanced plans like the E3, what they can achieve, what they can do. And if they're not doing it today, uh, basically there is an opportunity for them to start using that because they've generally never had access to it before. So there is an option obviously to show them and there is then an option to implement it and develop a policy and help them secure their information much better than they probably currently are. So how do we get to the Compliance Centre here? So if you log into your Office 365 uh, admin portal in the bottom left hand corner, you will see a uh, option called Compliance under the admin, so near the Exchange admin, SharePoint and whatnot, and that will then take you to the new Compliance Centre. So there you can see archiving, device management, e-discovery, retention and permissions. So rather than talk about that, let me just uh, swap across to my desktop here so you can actually see this uh, stuff in action. Give that a minute to uh, come up for you. Okay, so hopefully you can now see my Office 365. So down the bottom here, on the left, you'll see the compliance option here. Now, if I did select that, this will take me into the compliance option here. And you'll see that I can, for example, uh, turn on the archiving mailboxes in one hit for all my users. I also have my device management for my mobile device management here. And I've created an MDM policy already. I can manage my devices here. If I have the ability, I then can go in and create e-discovery cases. Remember that e-discovery cases allow you to search by a certain criteria across a certain amount of information and then place that information on hold or export it so that others can view it. I can then control the retention policies, you know, how my information is going to be retained, how long do I need it, what happens when it gets deleted. Uh, again, an opportunity to go in and speak to customers about that. One of the new Microsoft features that has been incorporated now is the ability to import data into Office 365 if you aren't aware. At this point in time, exchange data via PST can be either copied up into Microsoft data centers or it can be exported to on a hard disk sent to Microsoft data centers where they will upload it and you can then import it once it has been received at the data center. At this point in time, Exchange emails are the only feature that is uh, currently in uh, release, but the ability to do that with documents and a feature that Microsoft has announced is the ability to also import um, third party information such as from Facebook or Twitter. So if the company has a corporate 
Facebook or Twitter. Um, potentially, they can pull this into Office 365, and then if there's ever an e-discovery or a search required, they can search across that archived information as well and potentially present that to third parties. Now, what I'll give you here is a little tip. What you need to do basically is if you want the ability to search across all the information, by default, that's not enabled for all users. So what you need to do is go into permissions here. You need to go into the eDiscovery Manager and you'll need to edit that. And once you go in and edit that, you then need to add the people that you want to have this ability to search across all your information. So as you see, it can perform searches, uh, places on hold for mailboxes, SharePoint Online and OneDrive for Business. So by default, no user generally has that. Uh, again, typically add yourself as the reseller or add the administrator for the tenant into the eDiscovery Manager and that will then allow you to go in and do things like search here where I can go across and run an a compliance search. So what I've got here is basically, uh, let me go and show you. Okay, so what I've got here is in another tenant I have, I have, for example, a compliance search. Okay, so what I've done here is I've gone in and said, I want to just search across the items. You'll see here that I've got uh, across uh, 169 meg of data, 17 mailboxes, and I can go in and preview the search results. And when I do that, I will see this. So I'm searching for the word CIA Ops, for example, and you'll see that this then tells me it's in email, it's undelivered message. Um, down here, you'll see AS, ASPX pages. You'll also see that I've had it in uh, Skype for Business Conversations. So the difference here is, is when I run a search from here, Basically, it will find the information that's current. It doesn't allow you to place it on hold. It's just a search. So if that information changes immediately after the search, then you would have to run the search to get the latest information. But if you wanted to place the information on hold and you had the appropriate tenant, then you could use the e-discovery component. Now, what the e-discovery component gives you here, as you can see, is it basically allows you to create a dedicated SharePoint site that you can then go in and you can say, okay, what do I want to search across? These are my e-discovery sets. These are the queries. So what I can do, you'll see I've created a query here called profit. So if I go in there and click in there to see what it actually does, you'll see that it will give me the configuration of that query. So I've told it where I want to search. And in the query here, I've said I want to search for the word profit. OK, so I want to search across my team sites and my mailboxes. So when I run the search, you'll see that it has found 10 items of 2.3 meg. And if I go, for example, into the SharePoint side, so again, hopefully if I run search, okay, you'll see that it has found a match, obviously, in all those locations. So if I click on any of these locations, um, I can then navigate directly to that information. So importantly, here is the export button. So this is a feature that eDiscovery gives you is the ability to export that query out to a file that you can then provide a third party, typically a uh, law firm that is asking for this. Now, the other thing that we've got apart from the compliance area is uh, we can, for example, go into our reports. Uh, again, in the admin section, we can look at, for example, look at the uh, protection report. So here's an example of the default protection report based on inbound uh, inbound spam for the, the tenant that I'm working, uh, that one of the tenants that I have. So again, you'll see that you can choose from 7, 14, 30 days, gives you a nice graph. You'll also notice the ability down here that I can schedule that report so I can have that automatically emailed to me so I don't have to go chasing that. So you can also supplement a lot of this with uh, additional third-party tools. There is also a content pack coming for Office 365 that will connect all this sort of information into Power BI that will give you the ability to then uh, view the data and create reports any way that you wish. You'll also notice in the top corner here, I can also uh, view this as a table rather than as a graph. Again, if you want to get into the low level of Exchange, go into the Exchange area. And if you go into the Protection area, OK, so you'll see here you have the malware filtering and you can go in and edit the default policy that's there. You can create additional policies. You can change their priority. You'll see that I also have connection filtering, so based on IP addresses. We've got a spam filter, outbound spam and all that sort of stuff. Under compliance management, 
you'll see again some of this has moved to the compliance center but we have things like auditing and we have the ability to do our DLP so this is again where you would create your DLP policies in this case you'll see that I have two policies that are in place one is based on Australian financial data so Microsoft gives you a number of standard templates so in this case Australian financial data is credit cards swift codes those sort of things and I also have the Australian Privacy Act in place as well. So if that is then tripped, uh, you'll see that the user will get a policy tip. At the moment, I'm only testing it, so it won't be enforced. It won't prevent information being sent out. But it's easy enough for me to basically go in and edit that policy when I'm happy that it is detecting information correctly and not holding people up. I can then basically go in here and start enforcing that policy. So remember, uh, the DLP stuff is again a function of the more advanced plans. All right, so let me just swap back to the slides. Okay, so to uh, basically finish off here, I'll give you some resources. The resource that you really need to go to, point your customers to, to get them um, happy and comfortable. Um, again, don't try and answer all the questions yourself. Point them to trust.office365.com. There are some amazing videos, some real great information. There's some really uh, in-depth ways that Microsoft goes about securing its data center and its information. So you'll find information about HIPAA, compliance, security, all on that one site. So certainly recommend you go and point your customers to that and have a look at it yourself. Don't forget to keep up to date with stuff that's happening, especially around compliance, because lots of stuff's happening at blogs.office.com. So some best practices, uh, understand the customer need for security and compliance. It is a seller. Many customers are very concerned about this, especially with cloud technologies. Put their mind at ease with what Office 365 can do. Show them the advanced features, get them interested, and then you can sell them the more advanced plans. Uh, again, that means understanding their needs and selling them the plan that works. I mean, so many people that I see or clients that I see have been sold business plans and they have significant compliance requirements. And that means them adding plans or upgrading plans or changing it. It looks very bad when they're very concerned about, for example, data retention and they haven't got uh, the ability to put things on legal hold. So again, make sure you sell the right plan for the customer's needs. Automate your security and compliance. If you want to put, if you have legal hold, my advice to you is, is use a PowerShell script and put every mailbox on legal hold immediately. It doesn't cost you anything, storage is free. Um, there's no real downside to it. Uh, again, automate it using PowerShell script. Same sort of thing with your spam and your content filters. Set it all up and then configure it using PowerShell again and again and again. Make sure that you look at enabling all the options. Go through the client, go through the checklist. If they have DLP as an option, speak to them about it. If they have information rights management, speak to them about it. Make sure they're aware of it. You don't want them going out and purchasing a third party product. I've seen people who buy Office 365 for email and then they go and buy a third party file sharing um, utility because they wanted you know, end-to-end -end encryption. They weren't aware, they weren't told by their reseller that SharePoint again was encrypted at rest and encrypted end-to-end -end and, and supported the HIPAA requirement, which is the client required. So again, make sure that you enable all these features and you speak to the client about it. So some takeaways, understand what's on offer. There's a lot of really cool stuff in here, easy to set up, easy to script, but can make a big impact for a lot of clients and very enticing. Enhance your pitch, talk about security and compliance. Don't sweep it under cover, don't hide it, bring it out in front, get it up, uh, make it a, a differentiation point, show them how Office 365 can be so much better and more secure than perhaps what they're doing on premise now or maybe other vendors. Uh, again, understand the differences here. If you're targeting a vertical, maybe you're targeting the medical industry or accountants, uh, make sure you understand the industry requirements about that, maybe they need a data at rest, maybe they are uh, encryption at rest, maybe they need these other things. If you understand the industry requirements, then you can tailor the Office 365 security options to speak directly to those. So when you go and talk to a client in that vertical, you've already got those questions answered and it's far easier to get them interested in something that has the requirements they're required for their industry. And importantly, as I said, follow what's happening on the blog blogs.office.com because security and compliance is always being updated. We expect to see, like I said, the ability to import social media feeds very shortly. Um, that will be a major feature and enticing for a lot of customers.
So again, some resources. Remember that you'll get the slides after the fact. 